Today on a perfect mid-November afternoon at Doak Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee, Florida, it's the 56th meeting all time in one of the greatest rivalries in the history of college football. It's the Miami Hurricanes and the Florida State Seminoles. Good afternoon everybody and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough along with Matt Millen. We'll be joined in a moment by Heather Cox. Delighted to have you with us. So many times over the last three decades, this rivalry played a huge part in determining college football's national champion. Matt, we thought that might be the case when this season started. Right. Florida State with such high expectations, preseason number five. But they come in at six and three, all three losses when they were without E.J. Manuel, their quarterback, for at least part of the game. This season could have been a lot different, but E.J. Manuel, now that he's healthy, is back to top four. You know, Sean, this Florida State team goes as E.J. Manuel goes, and they don't really have an established running game. He's also their running game. But what does he do in the pass game? Well, he loves to be able to push the ball down the field, and they have the speed to be able to do that. He likes to do that early, and I'll look for that in this game. And then inside the play action game, he has a pretty good feel for. He'll use that to his advantage as well. And then we mentioned he doesn't really have the running game. He is the running game. They need it to be more than E.J. Manuel. We'll find out today if they can do it. Manuel has led the Knolls to four straight wins. They have annihilated all four of those opponents. Meanwhile, Miami arrives here with a record of five and four. They've played well lately. The Canes winners of three of the last four. And as a senior, Ja'Cory Harris has really matured into a mistake-free quarterback. You know, it's really interesting about this team. This is the 10th game of the season, and they're still trying to figure out exactly what they are, mostly because they've been beat up a bunch. But Ja'Cory Harris, he brings a lot to the table. Now he's a guy again he loves to push the ball down the field he likes his play action game because they do have a running game Lamar Miller is the guy that they rely on and then from Lamar Miller they want to be physical and then get your Corey Harris humming we'll see if that happens today only David of Wilson of Virginia Tech averages more yards per game rushing than Lamar Miller Seminoles getting ready to take the field led by Osceola It's one of the great atmospheres in college football but the home field has meant very little lately in this rivalry. The visiting team has won the last five. Let's take a look at our rivalry history brought to you by Sprint. 56th meeting Miami's played Florida State more than any other opponent. The Canes lead all time. We mentioned the road team has won the last five in recent years. It's been a rivalry that has been marked by upsets and most of the games have been close. Seven of the last ten divided decided rather by four points or fewer. It was not a close game last year in South Florida when the Knolls pounded the Canes. And no matter how many times you've witnessed that, it's still pretty awesome. And always awesome is Heather Cox. Well, Sean, thanks so much. This is also a rivalry about respect and familiarity. The reason virtually all these players either grew up playing against one another or with each other. In fact, linebacker Nigel Bradham said this rivalry is the reason we come to Florida State. Everyone knows everyone. Bradham's best friend, Miami's C.J. Horton. Miami's Lamar Miller, Florida State's Rodney Smith are cousins, and the ties go on and on. But today, those ties get thrown out the window. Moments ago, Coach Fisher told his team, respect the rivalry, but after the first quarter, the rivalry emotion will wear off, and then it comes down to execution, Sean. All right, Heather, thank you. Jimbo Fisher, second year as head coach after three as offensive coordinator and coach in waiting under the legendary Bobby Bowden, for whom this playing surface is named. And Al Golden played and coached at Penn State for the legendary Joe Paterno. Like so many Nittany Lion alums, it's been an emotional week for Al Golden, dealing with those emotions and also with his first rivalry game. And he admitted this is their biggest rival for the Canes as they take on Florida State. Miami won the toss and will receive. Dustin Hopkins was a great leg will kick off 22 of his 63 kickoffs have gone for touchbacks. That's a great number. This one's a line drive knuckleball fielded on a hop by Travis Benjamin. And he got stood up at the 23 yard line. 
Florida State an outstanding special teams club. Terrence Brooks led the coverage. And here comes Chicory Harris getting the play from Jed Fish the offensive coordinator. Harris senior from Miami out of Northwestern High School. And has moved all the way up to second in career passing yards. Behind only Ken Dorsey with a 1757 yard season. This year the great ratio 18 touchdowns just four interceptions 64 percent completion solid by just about any standard. But leading a Miami offense that has been inconsistent. This season. Quick toss by Harris. Out to Alan Hearns who lost the football after the catch. And the Seminoles LaMarcus Joyner runs it in for a touchdown. Not the way they wanted to start it Sean. Mike Harris like you said just really well played. And the Seminoles have been talking about getting turnovers. You don't get any better than that first play. They're reviewing it. Al Golden talked about the importance of getting off to a fast start in this environment. That's not what he had in mind either. Mike Harris stripped it. And Joyner ran it back in after the Allen Hearns fumble. I Just they're reviewing it to see if Hearns had possession before the fumble if it was a catch and then a fumble. Sean one of the thing that things that uh, Al Golden talked about was getting off to a good start. And so this uh, this call is paramount in the way the game starts. They play well lately felt they played their best game of the season last week at home and their win over Duke. And they won 49 to 14. Meanwhile Jimbo Fisher's Florida State Seminoles in that four game winning streak they're riding have outscored their opponents 154 to 39. The receiver did not control the ball. Mm. It's an incomplete pass. It'll be second down at the 20 yard line. Please reset the clock. Wow. 1450. More than four minutes to review it. Of course, it has to be conclusive video evidence. Let's see if, if it took four minutes, how conclusive was it? <laughs> Let's see if he had control. He did have control. Yeah. Well, one thing I learned about as a player, Sean, a long time ago, you have to live with the call that they give you. But it's supposed to be conclusive. Yeah, I agree with that. Now, was that conclusive? I mean, you, maybe you could argue it either way. Yeah, you and I see it different, but. We don't have striped shirts on. Well, Lamar Miller following his blockers to the right got banged down by Nigel Bradham. Weak side linebacker senior on his way perhaps to leading their team in tackling for the third year in a row. He has a four tackle lead over Mike Harris this season. As a look at today's impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A a group that includes Tommy Streeter averaging nearly 21 yards per catch third in the country in yards per reception. Travis Benjamin with just three yards receiving today will become the sixth player in school history to go over 2000 career receiving yards. Eduardo Clements has come in at running back. He's a short yardage specialist goes out in the pass pattern and has the catch and a lot of running room. Chopped down after first down yardage at the 32 knocked down by Greg Reed an 11 yard gain and another first down. For Miami which has moved from the shadow of its own end zone and what what you're going to see is exactly what your Corey Harris saw right away he saw Reed drop and you you're going to take that right away. He had a void to the left side dumped it off underneath and picked up the first that's good job by vision of Jacory Harris. First and 10 32 yard line five minutes gone by no score. Lamar Miller now the running back. Play action pass for Harris. Throws caught. Travis Benjamin goes over 2,000 yards for his career. Sean, with a gain of 18 to the 50 yard line. This is why they have to get the running game going because Miami is very big off of play action. And it does a lot of things. First, it gives you an extra guy to block in protection. And then it also gives the quarterback just that little extra time to be able to find the receiver down the field. Well done outside by Benjamin. 
Sixth man with over 2,000 yards receiving in Miami. Santana Moss, Reggie Wayne, Michael Irvin, Lamar Thomas, Leonard Hankerson, the others. That's a great group. And Lamar Miller pounds his way near another first down, just short of the Seminoles 40, a nine yard run. It'll be second and one. Line here are the Chick fil A impact players on defense for Florida State, an outstanding defensive team. Fourth in the country in total defense with a great front led by Bjorn Werner from Germany and Brandon Jenkins who doesn't have the sack totals yet a year ago because he's been getting a lot of attention and that's freed up Werner and as we mentioned Nigel Bradham perhaps going to lead them in tackles for the third year in a row Morris back in at quarterback he started that opener in Maryland when Harris was suspended Benjamin the run after the catch and he's very near a first down they're going to mark it at the 28 and it is a first down for Miami an impressive drive for the Hurricanes an 11 yard gain and and they're doing it mixing up their quarterbacks and and so right now here's more stolen football and Sean you and I had their very first game of the season against against Maryland to start and they were impressed with Morris and they said he had played really well and then as soon as that game was over they went right back to Ja'Cory Harris. They felt Harris had outplayed him in their preseason practices. Wobbly pass, but it's caught by Hearns, who hung on at the 22 yard line. It'll be second down and four, six yard pickup. There are the numbers for Morris, who goes out and gets a congratulatory pat from Coach Golden. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how that works. I've always been. Schooled by Coach Madden, John Madden always says, "If you have two, you don't have one," and I believe that. Well, they're not playing two. I mean, no, they're just no, no. sprinkling they're having, in they're Morris with plays. Yeah, they're having a package for Morris. But it's interesting the way they do it because a lot of times when you think of a package, it's an option run right. or wildcat kind of plays. But that's not the case with Morris. He's running the same mm -hmm. looking plays that Harris is running. Lamar Miller comes up a little bit short of the first down third and one to come Christian Jones and Dan Hicks made the tackle. And so Sean because they are the same type of plays you want to say well then why are you doing it. And so yes, you do and you just did <laughs> I just did. And the answer is uh, with that brain trust on the sideline because I'm not figuring it out. Well, they're both picking up valuable experience. Of course, Morris will be back next year. Corey Harris will not. It's Morris in there right now under center on third and one. And a trick play. Miller looked like he wanted to throw it. Now he pulls it down and has the first down. Got banged out by Christian Jones. They'll mark it near the 11 yard line. Eight yard gain when the play got off to a shaky start. Well, and he was looking inside to Streeter. And Streeter had coverage, and then did you see him shift gears? Miller just hit another gear and boom, went right down that right sideline. They started at their own one yard line. Six first downs picked up now on this drive. This will be the 13th play. Harris back in at quarterback. Maurice Hagen's the fullback in front of Lamar Miller. Inside the 10 to the 9, a two yard pickup, second and eight upcoming. Cameron Irving made the tackle for FSU. They have a deep front four. They'll rotate eight players in there. One and thing, not a lot of drop off when those backups come in up front. Yeah, and one thing that hasn't happened this year for Florida State is teams really haven't run on them. They've been pretty darn good against the run all season long. Third in the country against the run and leading the ACC. Seminoles giving up just 79 yards per game rushing. James goes in motion. Morris a design run and they take him down. Bjorn Werner having a tremendous sophomore season drops Morris for a loss of six. You're going to watch Werner. He's right inside right down here. Powerful guy. He get he's gotten better and better and that's an area right there where he has really improved Sean what that was was great awareness. He he understood exactly where he was how he was outflanked. And it was also coupled by the fact that they didn't block him very well, well. when you have a 190 pound receiver trying to block him that's going to be tough. What Mark Stoops is the defensive coordinator. The drive comes down to this third and 14 15th play of an eight minute drive Harris to the end zone up for grabs and picked off. 
LaMarcus Joyner with his third interception of the year, and then a flag thrown after the play. He's we talk about the improved decision making of Ja'Cory Harris, Matt. That was not indicative of it. That's the old Ja'Cory Harris. He used to throw as many interceptions as touchdowns. With an interception, results in a touchback, Florida State's ball. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct for spiking the ball, number 20. The ball will be placed half a distance to the goal, the 10 yard line, Florida State to keep the ball, first and 10. That is the right call. And you mentioned about the decision making by Ja'Cory Harris. It's funny when you make bad decisions, there's usually pressure, and he got it. Well, since October 1st, Harris has thrown 14 touchdowns and only one interception. Joiner the pick, still no score. On this Florida State campus, the largest and highest powered magnet laboratory in the world. They research and design magnets for use in superconductors. Joiner's been a ball magnet so far in this game. Picked up a fumble, ran it in for a touchdown that was overturned, and now he has an interception. His penalty moved the ball back to the 10 yard line. Levante Freeman spins ahead for a yard. Well, let's go back and look at the decision by Ja'Cory Harris. Okay, he sees this coverage back here, okay? What he's not going to see is that the backer is going to run out. And Streeter is going to try to widen the corner. Ja'Cory Harris is getting pressure here. And because of the pressure, he makes the decision. But he did not realize that Joyner stayed in the middle of the field. And that's where that ball magnet got his pick. E.J. Manuel wants to throw it, and it's deflected and knocked down incomplete. Deflected by McConnor Regis, backup defensive lineman. Well, what a drive that was by Miami, Matt. 15 plays, 84 yards, over eight minutes, six first downs, and Miami was six for six passing on the drive before Harris threw the interception. And the whole thing, again, it's about pressure. And you have to remember this game, most of the time you can make great decisions. But the people who make the great decisions under pressure separate good from great. Last year, Harris threw 15 interceptions. The year before that, 17. This year, only five. Manuel sacked and lost the football. It's still free. The players don't see it. You can see it there right on the five yard line. Now the Canes are saying they haven't. It was free and just rolling around the grass for a while. Jeff Flanagan, the referee, now says Florida State ball. Well, that was rolling around the ground for anybody. You to know, pick was, up. you know, what was really good about that. The umpire, Danny Whirl. Here comes a sack off the top. It's Chicolo on one side, Olivier Vernon the other, and the ball's just flopping like you said, Sean. They didn't even realize it was out. Now there's the mass of humanity. Now here comes the umpire, and he's going to dive in. Just with the rest of them, there's the ball flopping around. It's right at the feet of Zebri Sanders. He had no idea. Big number 77. And now it, watch Whirl, it, the umpire. See the U? He's just going to dive right into the middle of that pack. And he sees it right away. He's yelling back to the referee who had the ball. And now he's going to make sure he got it. Much better place, though, on the top of that pile. <laughs> That's a good Where he at the bottom. Everybody standing up along the line from Miami. They come after the punt. Sean Powell got it off. Oh, that's a huge mistake. Misplayed by Benjamin. Now mistake. the question is, did he touch the ball? You cannot advance it, but it will be Florida State's ball back at the 28-yard line. Telvin Smith ran it in, but it cannot be advanced. But the officials indicating it is Florida State ball at the Miami 28. John, I'm going to give you the three rules of the kicking game. Don't be offsides. By the receiving team, recovered by the kicking team. By rule, the ball is dead when the kicking team gets recovery of the ball. The kicking team's ball, first down. Yeah, here they are. Don't be offsides. Don't rough the kicker. And don't let the ball hit the ground as the returner. He misplayed it the and first time. Don't do that. And then you just let it go. You may want to add that rule. <laughs> 66 yard punt because it was misplayed by a veteran punt returner senior Travis Benjamin. 
Miami's the second best punt return team in the ACC. Only NC State's been better. But that was a catastrophe for them. First and 10, Florida State. No score late in the first quarter. Manuel throws it up for grabs. And it's almost intercepted. Should have been by Mike Williams, who's really upset with himself that he didn't have his first interception of the year. They only have five interceptions as a team, Miami, in nine games coming in. Well, it's play action, and Williams does a real nice job of sinking as a corner. It looked like it was a cover two, and as the corner, you get a jam up front, and then once the receiver passes you, you keep getting depth. He did that very, very well. It was only a good play, though. The great play would have been the pick. Mike Williams transfer from Wake Forest. Now the freshman, Devontae Freeman. Turned the corner, tackled from behind around the waist. Made it to the 26. Sean Spence, another tackle. He averages 10 and a half per game. Only Luke Keekley of Boston College has more tackles in the ACC. Boy, is he good. I watched that tape of, against this Florida State team, and that Keekley kid, he's legit. But Sean Spence, same thing. Talk to the coaches about Spence. The first thing they say is great football intelligence, has a great awareness on the field. He's like a coach on the field. And because of that great knowledge and understanding, he puts himself in position to make a lot of plays. He played at St. Thomas Aquinas in Fort Lauderdale last year. Short pass. Good call. Kenny Shaw didn't get the first down, but got close. Got to the 20 on third and 12. Got 10, two yards shy of the first down. And Jimbo Fisher will send the field goal team out. And so the Miami defense does their job. They were in a poor, they had poor field position. They needed to at least hold it to a field goal. They couldn't give up seven, and they'll have an opportunity here. Dustin Hopkins, great kicker. Jimbo Fisher says he's going to have a long career in the NFL. 37 yard try for the junior from Houston. And it's right down the middle. Travis Benjamin misplayed the Florida State punt. And it led to three points for the Seminoles. Absolutely beautiful day Boy, here in the capital of the state of Florida, Tallahassee. Temperature near 70 degrees. Not a cloud in the sky. You got that blimp in the sky, though. Yeah, maybe just a couple of little coffee clouds. Wispy. But that's about it. Wispy. They're wispy. Wispy. That's wispy a good word for yes. it. Wispy. It is gorgeous, though. What a beautiful day. Dustin Hopkins to kick off. All right, Robert, thank you. To Corey Harris on target. Nice catch. It's Chase Ford, one of their three tight ends, sees regular action, 16 yard gain, and a first down for Miami. I know, Matt, a very emotional week for all of us, even yep. those of us who didn't go to Penn State, and for those who did like you, particularly emotional. But I thought everybody today, from what we could tell through the television, comported themselves very well. Not a lot to be proud of this week, but a lot to be proud of, I thought, today. Yeah, I thought, I thought the exact same thing, Sean. Well said. Lamar Miller carries to the 40. A four yard gain on what will be the last play of the first quarter. Miami turned it over twice and it easily could have been three were it not for a controversial replay review. Well, Sean, we are start of the second quarter. Miami down by three, held the ball twice as much, is mauling them in yards, but they're down. And Florida State hasn't had a first down. Miami had seven in the first quarter. But it's 3 nothing. Seminoles. Couple of key Miami mistakes. Ja'Cory Harris tried to dodge the rush. Might have just gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Then Bjorn Werner, who's from Berlin, Germany, made the tackle. Came to this country two years as an exchange student at the Salisbury School in Connecticut. Uh, he ran him down. Jenkins, again, 
not the numbers but Jenkins is the guy who made the play Warner ends up with the sack third and seven loud noise doesn't bother Harris first down to Tommy Streeter down to the 26 yard line 18 yard gain he, he didn't bother Harris because there's nobody around him and then Streeter gets to the middle of the field just like you're supposed to look at this protection nothing there well, they never covered Streeter yeah and that's to the middle of the field there should be a back seat the backers sucked up whoa there's nobody there it's right in front of uh, of the safety I can't imagine that's the way Mark Stoops drew up that coverage I think you might be right on that one. when we talked to him yesterday he said stopping Streeter was a top priority that have matched up a lot of the day with Xavier Rhodes their best cover man Lamar Miller good run bounces off a tackler and has a first down to the 15 ers Robert Flores. And the toughest game remaining for Boise State that home game with the Horn Frogs today. Stephen Morris in at quarterback hands it off inside the Miller and he powers down near the 12 yard line already over a thousand yards for the season Lamar Miller is the seventh different player to rush for a thousand in a season at Miami a list that includes Edger and James Willis McGahee Clinton Portis Miami is now outgained Florida State 149 yards to 13. Had the ball more than twice as much time as Florida State, but they still trail three to nothing. Harris has thrown an interception in the end zone, trying to avoid a big mistake here. From the 13, second and seven. Pulls it down and runs. Has a first down inside the five. Tackled around the ankles by Nigel Bradham, who prevented a touchdown. Nine yard gain, first and goal, Miami from the four. So playing this position is about decision making. And it's about making decisions under pressure. You saw him earlier throw one for an interception, bad decision. You saw him right there. Ja'Cory Harris saw the coverage, was able to pick up the first down, good decision. Mike James now the tailback. Well, they're going to throw a lob, and it is caught. Clive Walford, the tight end, with his first touchdown of his career. On a two yard pass and the Hurricanes who have dominated at this point now have the lead. That one is on Ja'Cory Harris because you have a size mismatch outside no matter how that defender plays you the right throw wins. And so he sees that he's fronting the receiver. And so all you have to do is throw it high and behind and Clive comes down with the catch. Yeah, he's six four. Mike Harris trying to cover him was five eleven. Jake Whiteclaw. Adds the extra point. Al Golden, resplendent in his handsome tie, <laughs> thinks the lead's good looking too. For their service to our country, Jake Whiteclaw kicks off. 7 to 3 Miami now, midway through the second quarter. Here comes Greg Reed on the return. To the 34 yard line, Eduardo Clements took him down. Here's to. E.J. Manuel. They run 12 plays. They have 13 yards of offense. No first downs, and now they have one. And plenty more. Christian Green, the catch. Redshirt freshman from Tampa with a 23-yard game. Well, it all starts up front again. Nice protection because it's a crossing route. And one thing you know about crossing routes is they take time to develop. When you have an offensive line that's protecting like that, you're able to make the completions. Exactly midway through the second quarter now. First and 10, Florida State at the Miami 42. They rush five. Manuel able to dump it off. Devontae Freeman. 
Now to the 32, close to another first down. Von Telemach the tackle. Here's Heather Cox. Well, Sean, Miami's defensive coordinator, Mark D'Onofrio, just gathered all his position groups and said, look me in the eyes, make sure you can see me. Then he reviewed some of his signals, saying we need to communicate, get on the same page. He then asked his defense to be smart, keep poised, finish like crazy. He said we need everybody to do their jobs. Everyone in a gap, help on the slant, bat down the paces. It was working until that last first down. Let's see if the pep talk works now. I don't know what he's upset about. They're giving up one first down. Here's the second. Levante Freeman. If they're having problems with the signals, they should have problems with the signals all the time because it's been an outstanding defensive performance. Telemac with help from Mike Williams on that last tackle for Coach D'Onofrio, another Penn State grad who had an emotional week. Yeah, and as you look at, at Mark D'Onofrio, he is an emotional guy, and he's a he's high intensity. He played that way. He's talked to Ron Wolf, the mastermind of the Green Bay dynasty right now. Loved him as a player. Played one game, had 15 tackles, tore his hamstring off the bone, end of career. Manual all over the place, and finally they get him down for a loss. That'll be a sack. Back at the 29 yard line. Ron Wolf's not the mastermind of the Packers now. Yes, he, well, he started the whole thing. Yeah. He started, he, and, and in fact, Ted Thompson is yes. one of his disciples. I thought you were saying right now. No, no, no. Wolf's no, he's been away from that job for a little bit. He started in 91. Yeah. And, and in fact, I, I just spoke to Ron, and he was talking about Mark D'Onofrio, and he just said that he loved his aggressiveness, and you're seeing that aggressiveness in the way he calls plays. His, he loves Play callers are about instinct, and that's what he has. Second and 12. Five man rush again. Caught in the flat by Christian Green. Out of bounds, shy of the 20 yard line, taken out by Mike Williams. And a big third down upcoming for Florida State, the line to make the 17. So it'll be third down and four. And so again, he dials up a blitz. Which means he's playing. Uh, you know, he's been doing two things. He plays man blitz stuff, and he also does some zone blitz things. Jimbo Fisher calls the plays. <laughs> A lot of the coaches just hold the play sheet up in front of their face. They put towels up. <laughs> to the towel guy over here obscured the view of Jimbo Fisher's lips. Gets a lot of help from James Coley, their fine offensive coordinator in the box. Manuel throws end zone, and it is. Touchdown, Rodney Smith. Rodney Smith got on top of the coverage. And the corner was waiting for help from the safety. It's a stutter move to the outside. Here comes the safety, but the ball beats them both there. And Smith comes down with six. And the extra point good by Dustin Hopkins. Rodney Smith Jr. from Miami with his fourth touchdown reception of the season. 21 yards from E.J. Manuel. And Florida State has reclaimed the lead in the spirited rivalry game. Sean McDonough, Matt Millen, Heather Cox. Back at Doak Campbell Stadium, Bobby Bowden Field, Tallahassee, Florida. Florida State has recaptured the lead on the reception by Rodney Smith. First four possessions, just 13 yards and 12 plays, but that touchdown drive, six plays, 66 yards. 15th touchdown pass of the year by E.J. Manuel, the junior from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Travis Benjamin brings back the Dustin Hopkins kickoff, flags down. Benjamin all the way to the 40 of Florida State. First and 20. Each team has been penalized four times. Coming down to three minutes left in the half. All three timeouts remaining for both teams. Harris to Streeter using that size again. Catch made in traffic. Good catch, say the officials. At the 46 yard line, 24 yards, first down. That's all Streeter because Mike Harris has outstanding coverage. It's just Streeter just goes up and gets it. Look at that. That wow. is, that's really good. And then he, he, 
He's the guy who controls the ball on the way down. Harris had a shot at it. Good position. Played it well. Streeter played it better. First and 15. Two minutes to go in the half. Problems for Harris and Miller. And Harris goes down with a loss on the play. Back to the 39. They lost two. Al Golden talking about the importance of consistency and how inconsistent they've been. And you see that come to life here in this first half. They have stretches where they look outstanding and then moments like that. And you know Sean it's, it's not just on one side of the ball it's on both sides now defensively they've been pretty beat up and they've been kind of mix and match and offensively though they've had more consistency in terms of who's playing the inconsistency becomes how they're playing and the clock is rapidly winding down Stephen Morris back in high throw and Alan Hearns couldn't catch it with Greg Reed in coverage for the Knolls third down and 17. They're just going to play zone back there. Zones basically are predicated off of pressure from your front four. And then your ability to be able to narrow those zones, Sean. And so the Florida State defense did a real nice job there of keeping those throwing lanes pretty tight with coverage. And I'm with you. I now cannot figure out at all this quarterback that substitution I don't get pattern. It and Harris has thrown the ball very well. You've deemed him to be your best why would you take him out of the game on second down and long Harris back in throws on the run diving catch incomplete pass by Clive Walford the receiver ruled to be out of bounds or the ball hit the ground well Vince remember, Williams coverage yeah remember we said that this is this was his own defense and that's a good call yep official right on top of it headlines been right there but they did get pressure up front and forced him off his mark and as soon as that happens that's that's half of the win when you're playing zone defense Dalton bots short punt takes a Miami bounce fielded by Greg Reed gone. he's going to go Sean, he broke the rules again. Sometimes <laughs> rules are meant to be broken, even when they belong to Matt Millen. I'm with you on that one. 83 yard return. The only man who had a legitimate shot at the end of it was going to be Devon Johnson, and he came up limping with an apparent hamstring injury. And once he blew the tire, right about there, it was ball game over. He wasn't going to catch him anyway. Jimbo Fisher was raving about his special teams yesterday. Well, a lot of surprises in these rivalry games, including a missed field goal by Hopkins, one of the best in the country. At the half, Florida State 17 and Miami 7 out of the studio with the halftime report. From sold out, Doak Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee on a gorgeous mid November day, Florida State. Leads Miami at the half 17 to 7. And we welcome you back to Tallahassee. Sean McDonough with Matt Millen rejoined in a moment by Heather Cox. Lots of wacky plays in that first half, including this one. E.J. Manuel called for intentional grounding. Originally it was deemed a safety because it came in the end zone. The call after a couple of replay reviews and a lot of conversations was overturned we mentioned that really isn't covered that play specifically in the rule book we had a nice conversation with Doug Rhodes the supervisor of ACC officials at the half and he had a very good explanation for it in that instance it's just like an intentional grounding play that happened clearly out in the middle of the field you don't penalize the offending team from this spot from where he throws it if you were out at the 40 yard line say you're going to penalize intentional grounding from where his feet are. So in that instance his feet were clearly outside the end zone. That's why it wasn't a safety to me. What was interesting they had the ruling was the ruling. But he said you know I was on the field for 30 years never saw it and I've been doing this job for the last how many years. That's the first time I've ever seen and you that. and I had not seen it either. Exactly. Which is probably why he isn't in the rule book. <laughs> now perhaps it will be although that explanation of it makes sense. A run of the mill grounding penalty would be 
enforced from where the feet were or both out of the end zone. Carlos Williams number nine and Greg Reed back deep. Receive the second half kickoff from Jake Wyclaw. Miami kicks off down 17 to 7. Despite the fact they had a decided statistical edge in the first half, they also committed a lot of mistakes. Here's the true freshman Williams. Flag down. Flag down back at the 28. It's a touchdown of its stands of 94 yards. Well, you could really see his strides of Carlos Williams, and once he got, once he hit those strides, Sean, there was nobody catching him. During the return, holding number 32, 10 yards for Sam. Mm. James Wilder Jr., like Williams. The true freshman, Carlos Williams, one of the most highly recruited players in the country coming out of high school in the spring out of Davenport, Florida, five star safety prospect. 6'2, 220, and as you saw, he can fly. He sure can. There's And there's 32 right there. Might have been embellished a bit by the Miami player. Yeah, he's going to get an Emmy right Ooh. after this. And you saw from how far away that flag was thrown. Well, the ball's marked back near the 15 yard line. E.J. Manuel takes off running. Slides down across the 20. Here's Heather Cox. Sean, thanks so much. Jimbo Fisher was very honest when he said, I am amazed that we've got three first downs and we're up by 10 only in a rivalry game. As for Miami and Al Golden, he said, we've got to keep poised. We're making way too many mistakes. I talked to him about Ja'Cory Harris. He's suffering from back spasms. He had heat on it in the locker room, was also in the bike. They're trying to keep those muscles warm. He said, as long as I keep moving, I should be good to finish up this game. There he gave Jed Fish, the offensive coordinator, the thumbs up when he came out to warm up for the second half. Catch made. Christian Green across the 31st down. 11 yard pickup. Tackled by Von Telemach, a safety. Of course, they're playing without Ray Ray Armstrong, a fine safety who was suspended for a violation of team rules in the silly incident earlier this week when he tweeted. That he was having dinner with a representative of an agent and, and not only tweeted that, but then sent a picture along of his chicken dinner <laughs> via tweet. Four wide receivers. There's pressure. Yeah, they rush five. They force Manuel to step up, throws on the run, has his man. Burt Reed deep into Miami territory. Out of bounds at the 29 yard line, chased out by JoJo Nicholas. Sean, the great. Tiebreaker when you get pressure is the feet of the quarterback, and here it is. And it's because he moves up in the pocket, he's able to make that throw because he bought some, he bought himself some time. It was man to man. It was on Telemac. He just shakes Telemac, and because Manuel is able to buy it, it's a big play. 33-yard play. First and ten. Florida State. They only one sustained drive. In the first half. Burt Reed again. Their one long touchdown drive scored by the offense went for 66 yards. The other five possessions for the offense in the first half, 13 yards total and no first downs. Sean, at the half, Miami had over 200 yards total and they had 79. And they had twice as many, 19 plays to 40 plays, and they had a 10 point lead. Second and three. We're told the replay booth is fully functioning now. After the fake, Manuel the rollout has his receiver, Kenny Shaw, who took a lick from Vaughn Telemac. But it's a first and goal for Florida State at the nine yard line. This is a nice play call. Gets him on the edge. And he's again, he's using his feet to their advantage. Both these play callers do the same thing. They have to buy some time because it's a crossing route and they take time. 13 yard gain. Manuel's 5 for 5 on the drive. They've marched 77 yards. Best offensive possession of the game for Florida State. Draw. 
Devontae Freeman back to the line and a little more. And it's really what both coaches said during the week that it was a physical rivalry, but clean and physical. In a lot of respect, the Florida State coaches are saying in their rivalry with Florida, a lot of the fans, there's hatred involved, and there's probably not a lot of love between the teams either. These two teams really respect each other. They appreciate the way they play. They know each other. So many friendships, as we've already chronicled. Some of them are related to each other across teams. And it lived up to what the coaches said it would be here today. Second and goal. It's the four-man rush. Freeman's wide open. Got rocked at the two-yard line. Got it down to the one. Paid the price. From Sean Spence and Marcus Robinson. Sun setting on a glorious day here in the capital of the state of Florida. Florida State, after Marcus Robinson walked off under his own power, third and goal. Manuel stopped for a loss. Sean Spence, another big play. Help from Denzel Perryman, the true freshman who's been starting at linebacker. There's some talking going on in there and some pats in the back and pats in the rear end because they know each other so well. And what they're really knowing is Sean Spence's great ability to key and, diagno di key and diagnose. He does it extremely well. I can't say it very well, but he does it extremely well. He sees things, and, man, he gets on it fast. I also thought he did and diagnosed that well, too. <laughs> so either way, you had it right. Justin Hopkins already a rare miss in this game. Now he's two for three with a 21-yard field goal. So a nice drive. They move from their own 14-yard line to the Knolls after a penalty nullified a kickoff return for a touchdown. They got stopped near the goal line and settled for three after the big play by Spence. We look at the impressive Florida Vietnam Veterans Memorial right across from the old Capitol here in Tallahassee. Graved on those granite columns, the names of more than 1,900. Floridian Vietnam War dead. 83 men still listed as missing in action. After the field goal, the Seminoles lead. 20 to 7. Had the ball for nearly six minutes. Miami will touch it for the first time here in the second half. After the kickoff by Dustin Hopkins. Travis Benjamin from just inside the end zone. Ran into traffic and then ran out of bounds at the 13 yard line. Harris threw it a little high, but it looked like it could have been caught by Travis Benjamin. Second and 20. Benjamin was sitting down in the hole in the zone, which is what you're trained to do. Ja'Cory Harris had a little bit of trouble finding him initially, and then the ball came a tad behind him, but I. I'm with you, Sean. I think he should have caught that ball. Mike James, the running back now. Movement along the line, no flags down. Catch made. LaRon Bird, his first catch of the day. He got whacked around, made it to the 28-yard line. It'll be third and seven after a gain of 13 here's Heather well Sean unfortunately a plethora of Miami injuries to report on let's start with Miami's offense without star receiver Tommy Streeter he's got a right knee injury trainer Vinny Scavo has been working with him testing it he's trying to get that act out there now defensive end Marcus Robinson you saw him go down he suffered a rib injury he has not yet been cleared to play kick returner Devon Johnson out with a hamstring injury suffered on that punt return in the first half that's it guys I'll get back to you with more third and seven Harris zings one short of a first down. Alan Hearns made the catch, but he's a good two and a half or three yards short of the marker. And the punt team will come out again for Al Golden. That's on Hearns, Sean. You can't run that route short of the sticks. You have to have field awareness as a receiver. Dalton Botts punts again. This time nobody touched him. Manual after the fake. 
Throws it out to Bo Relliford, the tight end. Nice run after the catch. Powerfully done. Just the sixth catch of the season for the senior from Fort Lauderdale, Relliford. Powerfully, Calvin Kane finally got him out. Yeah, powerfully done by Relliford and Kane. Kane's got to finish this. You can't give up extra yards. Watch this after contact. Here's the hit. And he just keeps on taking him. Got to have a little oomph behind that hit. First and ten, final minute of the third quarter. Christian Green, a lot of running room after the catch. He's in the Miami territory, run out at the 47 by Lee Chambers, backup cornerback in there now. 13 yard pickup for the Knolls. Florida State trying to win five straight ACC games for the first time since 2003. Leading 20 to 7. Lonnie Pryor pulled back his first carry and it came to an abrupt end. McConnor Regis with help from Casey Rogers big drops it for loss. Yeah, big McConnor Regis inside gets the tackle and Chicolo, number 71, the left defensive end, he held the edge and he set the edge. And we talked about that earlier. What exactly does that mean? That means that you have, are going to gain a position uh, to be able to force everything back inside, Sean. And Chicolo did it well there. The only scoring in that third quarter of field goal by Dustin Hopkins to add to the Florida State lead. 56 meeting in one of the great rivalries. In the history of college football and Florida State leading this one 20 to 7 as we go to the fourth quarter on second and 11 from near midfield Manuel found Rashad Green Brandon McGee ran him out of bounds short of the first down by six yards. And what a talent Green is he had six touchdown receptions in their first five games before he went out with a high ankle sprain. They should have if everybody comes back and they're all healthy 17 starters back next year with a lot of young young skill and another great recruiting class coming in they had the highest rated recruiting class entering as freshmen this year manual throws caught and it appears to be a first down for green again it is to the 36 yard line and yeah, we talked about. Florida State being six and three despite the fact that they were ranked number five in the preseason we asked Jimbo Fisher with all of these young players all the freshmen and sophomores on the two deep was that a little unrealistic and he said no not if EJ Manuel stayed healthy and we I might I have won to, every game I tend to agree with him that Oklahoma game they they, they were playing really well Freeman first to speed. Kelvin Kane made the tackle. You know, we talked Matt about it. He did a great job with these great recruiting classes under Jimbo Fisher. A lot of five-star recruits. Freeman was not a big-time recruit. They actually went down to his high school to look at somebody else, and Jimbo Fisher wound up liking Freeman, and wound up offering him a scholarship. Sometimes you kind of stumble into a good player and too. It's easy to see why he likes him. You mentioned it. That burst at the end. Not everybody has that. He's not a big guy, which might have been why. A lot of schools weren't on him, just 5'8. They list him at 200 pounds. He ran into Olivier Vernon and McConnor Regis there. And we're down under 12 and a half minutes to go. 200 pounder. He runs with pretty good strength, Sean. He's got good balance. Like you mentioned, he has that burst. But what you really see with Devontae Freeman is every rep that he gets, he, he, he's putting it in the bank. And he gets better every time. It's another experience. This kid will do nothing but continue to get better. More pressure from the Canes, and the pass is batted down by McConnor Regis. One thing that this Miami defense really could use is a pure pass rusher. Chickalow is just a freshman, he has some of that skill. Marcus Robinson 
was probably their best pass rusher. And Vernon could be that guy. Could he had be. ten and a half sacks last year, but he hasn't returned to that form after being suspended for the first six games of this year. What they really need here is to force a field goal because even if Florida State kicks the field goal, it would still be a two score game. Manuel in trouble from the get go. Now powers his way back toward the line. He is down at the 20 yard line. Go back to the timeout a moment ago. As you watch Sean Spence make a tackle, this is what he saw earlier. Kane had not lined up properly and they were not in the right set. Spence was screaming at him and then they got the call of timeout from the sideline and that sets up this fourth and 13 after he makes the tackle on third. Now Golden hopping around on the sideline as they line up to defend a field goal try. 38 yards for Dustin Hopkins. And that is about as perfect as it could be. And a big three points on the board. Now Miami will need two touchdowns and two two point conversions to tie. Place. Hopkins kicked it into the end zone. Corey Harris out of the shotgun comes out sling Streeter was out for a while with a knee injury as reported by Heather back in there and has a 13 yard gain out to the 33. Sean down two scores at the 11 minute mark. This is a monster possession for this Miami Hurricane team. They've got to put six points on the board and give themselves enough time to be able to have another drive. Lamar Miller the tailback. Maurice Hagen's the fullback. Miller following Hagen's toward the corner. Beautiful patience. The turn would look like nothing into about a four yard gain. Here's Heather. John Florida's defense will be without cornerback Xavier Rhodes the rest of the game after he suffered a thigh contusion which is certainly frustrating especially considering the coaches were saying he was playing his most dynamic football of the season and he's been matched up with Miami's Tommy Streeter most of the night. We'll see if Miami recognizes that Rhodes out and continue to throw the ball to Streeter. Streeter out of the game at the moment. Three wide receivers. Benjamin Burns, Bird and Benjamin. Yeah, Benjamin in a slot. Harris complete to LaRon Bird. Breaks free from Greg Reed. But he's out of bounds. Back at the 44 yard line. Enough for a first down for Miami with under 10 minutes to go. And they're picking their pace up. And this will all be on the offensive line. If they can continue to protect and give Ja'Cory Harris time to throw. They'll punctuate it with a score. First and ten. Harris Take it. runs away from Jernigan. Still going. And slides down inside the 20. Nifty run by Ja'Cory Harris. 28 yards his longest run of the season. Playing the quarterback position is about reading but not only just coverage. It's reading when it's your time to be able to take advantage of the coverage down the field. He sees this perfectly, and that's a huge game. Interesting formation here. The tackle, Feliciano's gone way out to the right of your screen. And they catch them off guard with that formation. Walford the catch, and he's just short of the end zone. 16 yard completion to the tight end, Walford, with the right tackle, John Feliciano, lined up where the wide receivers would ordinarily be to the right. You see, Walford lined up back in here. And so, what that does, they have everybody spread out, but look in the middle of the field. There's nothing there. And so, Walford says, hey, I'll take it. Part of that was because. Florida State didn't know how to adjust to the formation. Well, nobody else even moved from Miami. Morris goes in motion, takes the snap. Back-to-back -back trick plays by Miami. 
Boy, it looked like he got across the plane, but the officials on the line of scrimmage saying no. I don't think I've ever seen a snap to the guy in motion. Have you? I mean, no. at, I mean, from center. Yeah, to move under center and take it. Sometimes you might see him lob it up, and it's caught by somebody in motion. Boy, it looked like he got in, didn't it? Where's the ball? So not right on the line of scrimmage around the goal line, rather. But here we are. And boy, boy, I don't know. I that looks that's a pretty tight, doesn't it? And it's Mike James. Touchdown. But let's wait for the review, <laughs> which is almost <laughs> certain could, to come. You couldn't help it, could you? No. <laughs> well, they needed this drive to be punctuated with a score, and James gets the score. And it's power football, just a power O. A good pulling guard movement there by Harlan Gunn, the senior from Omaha, Nebraska. At Omaha Central that produced Gail Sayers and Amon Green. They go for two. They really need it to make it a one score game. Get within eight. Harris throws, dropped. Oh. Well, he had two men open, elected to throw it to Hearns. Who dropped the ball? That is a critical drop by Alan Hearns, the sophomore from Miami, Florida. They gave you that bunch look, Sean. They got what they wanted, completed by making the throw. Benjamin was open too. Ten point game. No wind at all. Beautiful sunny day around 70 degrees. It's chilly here the last few days. Warmed up today. Ten point lead after the failed two point conversion on a drop pass in the end zone by Alan Hearns. So White Claw kicks off. Here comes Lamarcus Joyner. Across the 20 and then driven back. Lamarcus at the 21. Here's now this, the game has to go back offensively for Florida State to control this clock and defensively for Miami to get out on three downs. Reed now tied with three others for the record with three punt returns here at Florida State over the course of the career. Devontae Freeman brought it out to the 24 yard line. Three yard gain, second and seven, six minutes to go and just one timeout left for Miami. Had to burn a couple here in the second half. Manuel use as much of that clock as he can trying to snap it down at the two or one second mark. Mm. Swings it out stops the clock. Yep. Christian Green couldn't hang on and the clock stops with 531 to go a big break for Miami. So Sean here we're back in that same third down situation. You've got to be able to get them off on three. Here's your opportunity. Now let's see what defensive coordinator Mark D'Onofrio does. Does he roll the dice and bring a blitz and try to force it quick because you have third and what seven. And try to force it underneath and rally the guys. Or is he going to play a little bit of zone. Seminoles just three for nine on third down. They have just 242 yards of offense, but a 10 point lead. Here's Freeman. Turns the corner and has the first down. Finally upended by JoJo Nicholas at the 39 yard line. 15 yard run. First down and a big one to keep the clock ticking for Florida State. And a nice job by Bobby Hart, the big 17 year old freshman. And a nice job also by the fullback, Lonnie Pryor, number 24. And that allows. Vontae to be able to get that edge. And that that's a big freshman. You know, he's just like you said, John. He's only 17 years old, old Bobby Hart. I have a I have a big old puppy at home. He reminds me of that. <laughs> he's just going to continue to get better and better. The coach is talking about his maturity level. Monty Pryor got to the 40, and that's it. Tuesday. Super Knolls are here. No one and no two. Yeah. Knolls of all types enjoying this one. And every now and then you just throw a box on your head and you show up. 
<laughs> We're well past Halloween, I think. <laughs> yeah. There's a different calendar here. E.J. Manuel trying to make sure he stayed in bounds, and he did. And the clock will run under four minutes to go. That's just good awareness by E.J. Manuel, knowing that he's got to stay in bounds, and so he slides in to go out. You wonder how much different their season might have been had E.J. not separated his left shoulder against Oklahoma. They lost that game. Lost two others, in which he did not play at all or appeared in just a part of it. Talk about the friendships. EJ telling us yesterday he's close to Ja'Cory Harris. They met while they were both in high school at the Elite 11 quarterback camp out in California. Landry Jones, Andrew Luck, Blaine Gabbert were there as well. Devontae Freeman out to the 45 yard line, and Manuel and Ja'Cory Harris have stayed in touch over the years. They were at the Peyton Manning Academy. Over this past summer, renewed their friendship. Timeout Miami, they're out of timeouts and running out of time here in Tallahassee. We, go, we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Florida State leading by 10, 196 yards passing and a touchdown from E.J. Manuel, one of the biggest plays of the game, maybe the biggest, the 83 yard punt return by Greg Reed, Corey Harris. Thrown for 175, big drop on a two-point try moments ago. Since Florida State got it back, they've taken three minutes and 12 seconds off the clock, and now they'll punt on fourth and four. Hopkins went down, or excuse me, Powell went down, wanted a call, but they're not going to get it. And Sean's punt went into the end zone. 55-yard punt. Well, man, we mentioned earlier Al Golden. As a Penn State graduate, played tight end there, was a team captain, later coached there briefly. And his name's been mentioned a lot in recent years with the wonderful job that he did at Temple, turning one of the worst programs in the country around as a possible successor to Joe Paterno. Right. And you wonder now that that issue is upon us, if he'll be hurt by the fact that he has that Penn State history when they talk about cleaning house I mean he's not a, there and hasn't been there for a long time I wouldn't think that would be held against them but will they go completely away from the paternal tree if you will well even if they do Sean he has been if they say we're going to go away from the coach paternal tree they're really first of all there's not really a coach paternal tree nobody ever leaves the place no that's the first thing the Especially second thing Joe, is yeah. up until a few days and, ago and then uh, the, the other thing he's been around he's been to different places he's been influenced by by other coaches and although he played at Penn State he's established himself as a, as a coach other areas Corey Harris on second and ten deep throw caught first down LaRon Bird out to the 36 yard line good anticipation a nice route by Bird and an even better job of getting out of bounds to stop the clock that's perfect that's thrown right where it has to be Good anticipation by Ja'Cory Harris. 16 yard gain. They have to score quickly and onside kick and recover and score again. A lot to do in 240. Floater, somehow it got through to Hearns. That was a whisker from being intercepted, perhaps for a pick six down the far sideline. But Ja'Cory Harris had just enough on it to get it to Hearns and not. Have it picked off by Mike Harris. 25 yard game. Yeah, that would have been out the gate. That would have been 48 and out the gate, but he had to wait for that ball. The anticipation on the previous play was not there on this last play. Harris in the single coverage. Flag thrown. There was an awful lot of entanglement between Laron Bird and Greg Reed. Yeah, they're going to rule it uncatchable. There is no foul. The pass is ruled uncatchable. Second down. Greg Reed just turns. Now, there's the little push inside to the chest, but there, nobody was going to catch that ball. Now, you know it's a bad sign when the guy standing on the sideline is looking up in the air and watching it go over his head.
All day to throw for Harris. But nowhere to send it. Now he throws one under thrown and intercepted. Picked off by Terrence Parks, the safety. He had Hearns open and didn't get enough on the throw. Yeah, that's completely on Ja'Cory Harris. And there's a flag down back here. There was a change of possession during the down. The penalty 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. I want you to show what they're going to do is they're going to go down and they're going to get on top of the safety. And so he's looking at this back here. OK now is when the ball has to be thrown. He waited too long because Parks well it's under thrown. But the ball to needs to be thrown the back of the that. end zone and let Hearns run under it. and there's the roughing the passer penalty against the true freshman Timmy Jernigan that. And it gates the interception and keeps Miami alive. That was game over if the interception stood. Harris runs out of bounds. That's a huge call. Just a huge call. They've given him with the, at the two minute mark. They've given him a chance Sean. And now they have to be able to manage this clock and this possession right here because they have to give themselves enough time on the backside. So they're going to have to take some shots into the end zone now, or get have again, a little more time. But getting a first getting down, time. yeah, getting to the first down marker and then getting out of bounds because they have to preserve the clock. One thing to keep in mind: Florida State's opponents have recovered two onside kicks against them this year, so they've been shaky in fielding onside kicks. Harris throws a wobbler. Oh my goodness! Bird got laid out, and you knew that flag was coming. In today's football you're just not going to be able to do that anymore. Nigel Bradham. Now Sean I'm going to say something here OK. And I'll probably agree with you. But yeah. you knew as soon as you saw that. Yeah. The flag was coming. And that and not, there's two things here. To me this you should penalize. Got to penalize because that's the rule OK. But that is on the quarterback. You should go back and beat your quarterback for even making an attempt to make that throw inside. You know you're going to get blown up. That is, that's that's just tough. Personal foul, illegal contact number 13. The runner launched, and made contact. He is ejected from the ball game. Wow. The penalty is half the distance from the previous spot with an automatic first down. Sean, the, the problem as a defender, I don't even know. You can't change things once you start at the process of going in to make the tackle. The good news now is that. Bird is being helped to his feet. Meanwhile, the crowd has already seen the replay as you can hear their reaction. Uh, and that's a shoulder in the chest. That may have been a pick on the backside there. Everett Dawkins comes he and he, he may have that. himself. He didn't launch himself. No, he didn't. His right foot's no. still on the ground. That's a horrible call. And they announced he was ejected from the game. That's not good. Here's their leading tackler, Jimbo Fisher, irate, pointing up at the screen. I don't blame him. Bradham still on the field. Well, I thought that was a pretty good play by Nigel Bradham. Yep. First and ten, they could get another first down inside the one. Pop by Harris. Throws incomplete. Might have been better for Miami that Benjamin didn't catch it because he probably would have been tackled inbounds and a lot of time would have run off. Here's the throw. And Bradham is going to come in. He does not launch himself. He nope. lowers his level. He hits him with the shoulder. He hits him right square in the chest. Now you have no control over that receiver coming down, but you can lower your level, and he did that. And so I, I disagree with that call. Yeah, well, because you're, everything you said is correct. His feet were on the ground. He didn't leave with the helmet. He didn't hit him in the head. Catch made. Lunge for the pylon. They look at each other and no signal. Now they're going to call it out of bounds. Allen Hearns short of the end zone and short of a first down. And how big does Hearns drop on the two point play after their last touchdown look? Inbounds, still inbounds. His right hand goes out of bounds at the one. 
great effort. So first and goal, a minute and a half to go. Two roughing the passer penalties have helped this Miami drive. And it's James into the end zone for a touchdown. Well, now an extra point would get them within a field goal. With a huge onside kick to come. And again, we'll repeat the point. Florida State's opponents this year have tried four onside kicks and recovered two of them. Here's a critical extra point. They have trouble with the snap. And they do not convert. Spencer Whipple, the backup quarterback, is the holder. And now if they recover the onside kick, they'll have to score a touchdown. First missed extra point of the year by Miami. Mm. Wow. The snap is not a perfect snap, but it's a snap that's doable. Whipple just doesn't handle it properly and get it down. And the result is what it is. First onside kick they've tried this year. It's high in the air. Who will rip it away? Seminoles are saying they have it, and the officials concur. Al Golden doesn't like it. They're all pointing at it's yeah. Miami's ball. One of the officials had already signaled that it was Florida State's ball, but there's a lot of hurricanes over there who think that was a premature call. Well, goes back the other way. The, official, the uh, referee gives it the Florida State call. And they had already signaled the that it was their ball and it's Nick O'Leary the tight end is the grandson of the golf legend Jack Nicklaus who recovered on the hands team. Terrific kick by Botts. That's just perfect way up there went the 10 yards. And the strength of O'Leary just catching his hands mad and then do the rest of it with strength to fully secure it. Yeah, and he follows it all the way through, Sean. That's really well done because there's a lot of pulling and grabbing going on in there. Manuel takes the knee, and there's nothing Miami can do to stop it. Here's Robert Flores. Yeah, who can forget their nightmare last year in Reno, Nevada, when they had the field goal issues and lost to Chris Alt's Wolfpack. So after five straight wins in this rivalry by the visiting team, the home team is going to get a win. Al Golden and Miami will fall to five and five, still needing a win to be bowl eligible. And it's five straight wins, all of them in the ACC. For Florida State now seven and three Jimbo Fisher two and oh as head coach in this rivalry game <laughs> his defensive coordinator Mark Stoops who's been on both sides of it is now six and all. Oh. Only two hundred and fifty nine yards of offense for Florida State. Not enough for the win helped by critical mistakes by Miami. Final score Florida State 23 Miami 19. Be sure to tune in to ABC tonight 8 Eastern for Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. Number seven Oregon number four Stanford. Now for Matt Millen Heather Cox and our crew Sean McDonough saying so long from Tallahassee.